I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I can explain semiotics theory any better than Matt Damon. Um... It's bullshit. Not that bit, the next bit. This isn't even my tie. In fact, our data suggests that I have to stick to either a tie that is red or a tie that is blue. A yellow tie made it look as if I was taking my situation lightly and I may in fact pull my pants down again at any moment. A silver tie meant that I'd forgotten my roots. My shoes. You know, shiny shoes we associate with uh, high-priced lawyers and bankers. If you want to get a working man's vote, you need to scuff up your shoes a little bit. But you can't scuff them up so much that you alienate the lawyers and the bankers because you need them to pay for the specialist back in Tenafly. In that clip, he's basically talking about the meanings of signs. And that's exactly what we're going to uncover today in this video about semiotics. So, semiotics literally means the study of signs. In other words, the way we make sense of everything around us. So, let's start at the beginning. What is a sign? It could be anything. A symbol, a colour. Uh, a camera angle. How do you know what it is? Semiotics. Let's take a look with an example. Here is a sign, something that we can infer meaning from. It's called the signifier because it's creating meaning. Now there are two types of meaning we can get from this sign. The first is the denotation. That's literally what it is. So to anyone who recognizes it, this is the Apple computer logo. However, it also has a connotation. That is a sort of associated meaning. So although it is literally a picture of an apple or a logo, it might mean to you high-tech equipment, technology made in California, iPhones, mass consumerism. Now these aren't the only connotations of this sign because it depends on your ideology, your background, your culture. So depending on these factors, you might look at this and think Chinese sweatshops. You might look and think overpriced equipment. The reason for this is signs are polysemic, poly meaning many. So we can read signs around us in many, many different ways. Now, I'm gonna go into some more detail, but actually, that's essentially it. It's the basis for all semiotic analysis we do in media studies. Identifying signs and understanding what they mean and why the producer has selected them. So other than logos, where else should we look for signs? Well, it depends on what kind of media form you're studying. For today, let's look at signs in moving image. Here's one of my favorite texts to use as a starting point for analysis. It's called Tales of Terror for Tokyo. And the reason I like using it is because it's not in English. So when we remove language, which is where we get a great deal of our meaning from, how much can you still understand based on other signs in the text? Have a watch. だから待ち工場ちゃんって言ってるでしょ。早くここを開けなさい。早く開けなさい。何してる? So just to give you some context, no doubt you've picked up on the fact that someone's trying to force their way into this house and the little girl is very scared. You have no idea what they're saying, but you've got a great deal of meaning there because of the signs in moving image. Now there are essentially four categories of signs that we look for in film. The first one is mise-en-scene, which is a word which literally means everything within the scene. So the set, the costume, the hair, the makeup. In this particular case, you might have noticed that the corridor was very cramped. They chose to shoot it in a place which felt quite claustrophobic. There was also a lack of decoration. The walls were very plain and white. They lacked personality. It almost felt very cold. 
And finally, by selecting a girl who looked quite sweet and innocent and cute, the feeling of terror, like when you're a child, was so much more than had it been an adult trying to let someone in. The next category we have is sound. So you might see signs in the form of music, sound effects, the way people sound. I mean, listen to the voice of the person behind the door. You probably have no idea what they're saying, but the tone of the voice, that is creating meaning that we should be afraid of this person. They're angry, they're aggressive. Likewise, sound can be used very effectively with music. Here we've got these kind of discordant chimes, which almost sound like prickles down your back. And it just as effectively creates meaning with no sound. Remember this clip where there was no noise at all. Here, the lack of sound is what makes it feel so held breath, so terrifying. Next up we have camera work, which is a huge signifier in moving image texts. I've made a video all about reading cinematography. I'll put a link at the end of the video. But essentially, we can look at the way the camera is framed, the composition, the movement, and how that might be creating meaning for the audience. So in this case, we had an awful lot of extreme wide angle shots, sometimes bordering on like fisheye. Again, this really emphasized just the amount of space and how small the young girl looked in these small rooms. And then finally, we look at editing in film. And this literally means the use of sequencing, how one clip moves directly to another. A couple of things which I felt were really effective in this clip was the extended scene where there wasn't any cutting for a while. Because this scene was so long, again, it added to that kind of held breath sensation we had with a lack of music. Furthermore, by cutting from a shot of her face, eyes wide and terrified, straight to the door handle, we're creating the meaning that she is afraid of whatever is trying to get in. So now we know what signs are and where to find them. Let's take a look at some of the wider implications of semiotics. Signs are selected by media producers to create specific meaning. Take a look at this example. In my new magazine, I could select this picture to represent Plymouth, or I could select this one. My decision is going to create a huge amount of meaning for the audience. That's a huge amount of influence I have over my audience, my selection of signs. So what happens when a sign is used consistently in culture? Barthes argues that when this happens, a sign can become a myth. And a myth is almost like uh, an accepted dominant connotation of a sign. So a great example of this would be uh, a bulldog which, at least to British audiences, is an accepted sign for Churchill or Britishness. At the end of the day, it's just a dog, but in England, it is an accepted belief of what it means. We call this process naturalization. Think of it as the media shaping society's ideology through repeated use of signs. So another great example of a myth through the process of naturalization would be the representation of Dungeons and Dragons throughout the 1980s. The media kept painting Dungeons and Dragons with very, very negative signs that signified that it was associated with devil worship that actually very nearly killed off the game. So that's semiotics in a nutshell. Once you get your head around it and you have that penny dropping moment and you realize that everything you look at from this weird shape in front of me, which I know means microphone, but it also means recording, YouTube, it means so much more. Once you realize this, it, it's kind of like a bit of a mind-blowing moment. And I think media teachers always love it when students kind of come out with that line, you've totally ruined watching films for me because I'm looking at everything for meaning now. But once you get your head around this topic, it will really unlock your ability to analyze texts. Now there's a few videos I'd really recommend you move on to from here. The first is the one I mentioned earlier, how to read cinematography. So that looks purely at how we can look at signs in terms of camera work in film and what they might mean. Or if you're more interested in the idea of different cultures, different people reading the same signs in different ways, you might want to investigate Stuart Hall's reception theory, which you can watch here. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.